Good day, ladies and gentlemen. It's another day out with Nexi TV Buzz. And today, uh, we are going to take a little shift away from the regular Vox Pop and every other thing you get to see. Today, we are doing an outdoor interview. And we don't just have anybody in the house. We have a queen in the house. So a queen is going to be our guest for today. And she is no other than Ndoko Akwaibum 2017. So Ndoko is coming on board today to tell us things she has done, things she is doing, and things she's going to do. So stay tight and watch. Don't go away. Hello people, just as I promised, Dendoko is here herself. No representative, she is here, right here, live hey. and direct. <laughs> Say hello to the camera. Hello, hello everyone. <laughs> so exciting to be here. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And you? And you look beautiful, I'm fine. Oh, I was going to say that <laughs> first. You look splendid. Thank you, thank you dear. Okay, so back to the business of the day. I know you, we all know you, but... I mean, just tell us about you. Okay. Um, my name is Ekemini Corneli Sumoran. I am um, a medical doctor by profession. Um, I am the current Ms. Akwaibom, Ndoko Akwaibom, you know, as you all know. Um, very passionate about um, my field of practice in the sense that I believe that, you know, people come to you and you have solutions to give to them and they go about feeling happy. And I would say that was what actually transpired my going into the pageant platform because it's all about humanity. That's just basically about me. Okay, so I think you just answered the question. That was <laughs> what made you go into the contest. But then part I would... Of it. Part of it. <laughs> okay, then tell us the others. We want to know everything. Okay, first and foremost, you know, people had always perceived um, beauty pageantry as... Um, um, there's this, uh, should I say, this perception you yeah. know, that exists about Philosophy. beauty queens. Yes, um, wayward people, you know the entities and that, but it's really more than that. It is a platform to reach out to people. There are so many causes in the world that need attention. So many things from um, um, HIV and AIDS, which is even playing down now because so many people are aware to breast cancer, prostate cancer, cervical cancer, all forms of cancers, in fact. And then to other issues like teenage pregnancy, you know, there are even issues like sickle cell disease, vesicle, vaginal fistula, and the rest of that. So it all depends on what you want and what you're passionate about. Because other people are doing other things, so you just follow your passion and go into it. And mine was basically about breast cancer, you know, because it is something that was seen in um, people from 40 years and above. But now, a, a patient comes to your clinic, just 20, and already has signs of full-blown breast cancer. So that was actually why I decided to go into pageantry, believing that if I win, I could use my voice, you know, I could be heard and I could talk about what can be done to cope and reduce this menace of breast cancer to the barest minimum. Yeah. Okay, so now that you've told us what made you go into the contest, okay. we would love to know how you got to hear about the contest in the first place. Okay, um... I'm crazy about beauty pageants because, like I said, um, they offer a lot, even though society doesn't really understand what it is about, especially in this part of the world, it's very world. difficult. Um, but um, I have done a couple of stuffs in the past. I did Miss Aquaibum twice. This was the third one. Wow. Though I didn't hear about it on time, a lady who got involved with me, you know, she made my costumes as far back as 2008 when I did, that was my second attempt. She was a part of the planning this time around, so she gave a call to me after they had auditioned and was like, I didn't see you in my auditions, I think you should try this out, it's, it's your thing and you've always been passionate about, about it. it. So, you know. And this happened to be yes, when you won. Yes, this wow. argument, I was like, no, I'm not sure I want to do this, but I still had to go into it and I'm, I'm happy I did. Yeah. Okay. So I know it's been eight months since you got the crown. Okay. So by, I, I expect you to still remember things. So, did you have any fears, like... I might not win, I might win. Yes, absolutely, yes, yes, yes. Even though I believed in myself 100%, I did my stuff, I was ready, I prepared in all areas, you know. Um, but there was this, um, should I say 1% fear that, ah, what if I'm this good and I do all of this and then some other person wins probably. 
for some other strange reason, you know. So that fear was that besides there were so many beautiful girls in that house, man. <laughs> we had the popular ones. <laughs> we had the ones that when it's time for photo shoots, <laughs> they stand out, they are good. We had people who had a lot of fan base, a fan followers and the rest of it. It was it was crazy. And everyone was good. They were all good in their various areas. But I just, you know, I just knew my onions and I just did my thing. That was it. Wow. Even when the fear was there, but I didn't allow it to overwhelm the yeah. reason why I was there. So I just, I just had to focus, that's the word, and do what I had to do. So I yeah. know um, there were a lot of things you felt that day, but we want to know that breaking point, like that moment you knew, ah, there's no way, I have to win this. Okay, uh, the breaking point was after they called the top five and they were about to announce the, from the runner-ups, my mind was... If they are not special now up and it is not me, then definitely it can't be anybody else, you know? <laughs> so by the time they called the second runner up and it was Miss Mbo, they called, the, at the point of calling the special up, I was very scared. I was like, wow, this is the, because most times, most times I go yeah. for pageants, it's always special now, special now, special now. So somehow I got used to, you know, being pronounced special now up. So when I heard special now up, I was just closing my eyes, like, okay, okay, let's see. And I heard Miss E. Basic, but I just smiled. As in, I was relaxed at that point. I knew definitely I had taken it. That was when I knew. Yeah. So, yes, it's been eight months. What does it feel like being Doko Ah, uh, It feels wonderful. Sometimes it feels weird because you drive and people just look at you. Somebody will just stop you. Like, hello, hello, can I say hello? I want to see you. Stop, 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 pull over, you know. That's kind of crazy things. Uh, you walk into a place and you know nobody and everyone is like calling you. Recently, I went to do my clearance, you know, at, yeah. at the zonal office NYC. And um, just when I drove in, one man just called, hi, the Coco Mama, I'm so happy for you. I've not seen you again since I come and buy drinks for the guys and the rest of it. So, yeah, expect a lot of this stuff, but, but it's been beautiful, you know. It's been fun, also. Yeah. Okay, so what are we looking out for from Ndoko Akwaiba? Okay, so far Ndoko has been up to a whole lot of things. Um, I've, I've done some things, I've done some things. I will still do more, by God's grace, before I hand over. Um, if my first project was far back as November. That's like okay. two months. Okay. No, a month plus. It wasn't up to two months. November 18th, precisely. Um, I kickstarted my um, um, pink breast cancer awareness campaign. Okay. Yeah, so I went to um, Presbyterian Senior Science Secondary School, which happens to be the oldest science secondary school in, in Akwaibom State, located at Ididep in the Biona local government area. Okay. Um, I talked to the girls about different things. Somebody talked about personal hygiene. I brought in a medical doctor okay. and another motivational speaker. speaker. So the doctor talked about personal hygiene and, you know, the stuff it causes and every other thing related with it. The motivational speaker spoke about identity and how the students could, you know, um, decide what they want, discover their abilities, their passion, and then harness it to the next level in terms of career, you know, and the rest of it. Did a bit of career counseling too. Then I crowned it up with teaching them about self-breast examination. At the end, I gave a product, long reach products ranging from pads to panty liners and roll-ons and all of that. Yeah. That was the first. The next one was in December. That was December 11th. Um, there was this free medical outreach organized by um, Planet FM in conjunction with um, Ndoko Kwaibum and Sickle, Ruby Sickle Cell Foundation. So we did that um, in the rural local government area. It was their own way of giving back to the people. So I was, I was part of it and it was really very beautiful. I've done a couple of things. I did an um, AIDS foundation on February 4th, invited me to talk to some less fortunate kids who, you know, actually have talents, but maybe the parents are not rich enough to help them. So I spoke with them, gave out stuff, gave scholarships to three people, okay. to the best three students. Yeah, that's what I did. And then the last one I did, that was um, May. Yeah, that was, this May, right? Okay, that was as an April. I went to Methodist Girls Secondary School. Okay. You know, took me, steal the pink breast cancer awareness campaign. Gave talks on, I brought in two barristers who talked about um, the rights of the girl child. Okay. And then talked about rape, which is very common, and how to avoid all those stuff that lead to that, you know. Then I spoke on my breast cancer awareness talk, taught them how to do self-breast examination and gave out stuff to them as usual. I'm looking at going to Eket or running to the interior district. That's, that's the part I've not gone to. I've done stops in Uyo twice. I've done in Ikarek Beni. So 
Hopefully, okay. this month, with my month end, my next project should be at any school in the Kets Natural District. Yeah. Okay. So that's how far. Okay. So and unlike a lot, of, a lot of other stops, events in between, awards and the rest. So I've, oh, I've not mentioned okay. all of that, but it's been crazy. You know? <laughs> it has to be. <laughs> okay, so unlike every other person in your field, like every other medical doctor, you have a yes. crown on your head. How do you blend that? Uh, well, 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 I would say this particular crown came at the right time, you know, because I had finished my housemanship. I was oh. waiting to serve by November. I finished my housemanship by July, and that contest came up September. So I just made use of the opportunity, went in, and it worked, and I won. So it was very easy. In fact, when I went to camp, I didn't have any stress. They were just like, ah, Queen, you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't, you know, do this. So I actually, it gave me an advantage and an age. So when the postings were out, I was sent to a place that, uh, first of all, they, there is work, you know, but they understand when you have to be at work and when you have other duties to do, they respect it. Anytime I call them more, I can't um, come to work, you know. Okay, you fine, understand. do your thing. When I have to be there, I have to be there. So that's it. That's how I've been able to cope okay. with all of that. Yeah. Okay, so we've been all serious and serious. Now let's get playful. Are you ready for this play right now? Yes, there? I'm so You're ready. ready. I'm so ready. Oh, wait, do queens even play? <laughs> yes, you play, but in public, no. But when you're at home and with your friends, you can get wild and crazy, you know? <laughs> okay, so, okay, yes, I can do this, I can do this. Okay, right. Yeah, you're the queen. I mean, there are lots of guys out there. Wow, look uh -huh. at her. Okay. Look at her. I started coming. <laughs> <laughs> so let's know now. Are you giving them green light or red light? <laughs> uh, truth is, beauty queens are not supposed to get married, you know? Still, they you drop have to their crown. Yeah. You have to be a miss and you have to face your office and your job. Yes, there are a lot of guys, there are a lot of attention, people coming for different reasons, and ah, everyone is just my friend for now. Like, let's be friends. So, let's, brother, let's, let's, let's have fun, you know. Brother, they're liking our picture, alone. you are just our friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Oh, my friend. <laughs> so, with that crown in your head, like, we expect you to be. You are, of course, you are an, an inspiration to a lot of young girls out there. So, we want you to give a word of advice to someone there watching you. Okay, somebody out there, young girl, young man, whoever, you know. Um, I just want to say, be yourself. Believe in yourself. That's the most important thing. Um, there is nothing as good as having a dream and working hard to make sure that dream comes to pass. In my delay, like in my own case, I started pageantry as far back as 2006. That was my first um, attempt. Okay, my first attempt at Mr. Kevin was 2007, but I did faculty stuff, which oh. I won. Yeah. yeah. So... 2006, fast forward to 2017, wow. I am Mr. Wow. today, three times, you know. Wow. So it might not come immediately, you, you, there might be a reason for the delay, but whatever it is, never, never give up on your dreams. Keep believing, keep working hard, and trust me, one day it will come to pass. You'll be so fulfilled and happy that you followed your passion. That's what I have to say. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that has been everything from Miss Ndoko. That's all she wants to tell you. Perhaps that's all she has to tell us. <laughs> so keep it dated next to TV Boss. Please say hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> See you next okay, time. Okay, on behalf of Next TV yes. Boss. Blowing kisses your way, you know. <laughs> okay, have a nice day, y'all. Bye.